listen, the life ain't for the weak. The weak get eaten, right? Sharks don't eat sharks. You got to understand that. You got to be a soldier in this life. And that's not only in business, that's in family and that's in every other aspect. So today we're talking about how being strong, how being determined and how your will can drive you to success and overcoming these hurdles on the way to building wealth, wealth therapy, healing hurdles. You got to be a soldier. Let's go. Let's get it. Marcus, AKA Mr. 500, let's go. Anything you want in this world is dependent on Everybody wants to be wealthy. Everybody wants to get money for why? I did 25 million in the last two years. I come from nothing. You gotta move the earth. You gotta take action. You gotta act. Some of y'all are scared to tell people, fuck you. Stay back, baby. Ride big. Ice big. Nice crib. White fig started out just sweeping flows, not fat boy the CEO. Everybody want to stand out. You can't be the same and be different. You'll never be the best in your industry if you do what everybody else doing. You know you got the mindset. You know you got the ambition. It's just you haven't got the fuck up. Either I'm going to do this shit and execute or I'm going to fucking die. You talk as well. And I'm dripping south. This time we do the sell. I never knew getting money would affect me mentally. How many of you guys want to be most millionaires and create a legacy in a brand? We ain't in this for clout. We out here to get money. It's a whole lot of money in this motherfucker. It's my wealth therapy. So, uh, you guys know. Anytime we do wealth therapy, y'all know how we start off. You look good, you feel good, and when you smell good, you feel better. Listen, today's cologne of choice. I got on Satin Oud Elixir. It was, I did the Satin Oud, but the Elixir a little bit something different. So I had to put that one on today. So y'all know the vibe. It's that Satin Oud mood is, is different. All right. But listen, today I'm having a conversation with retired military vet Joshua Rico, one of my guys, one of my the recession proof family members, one of the, the my credit industry colleagues. Listen, super excited uh to have a conversation about building wealth, but after the military and some of the things that relate to it. So today I want to welcome my brother Joshua Rico, man. What's going on, bro? What's going on, man? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. So listen, we gotta we gotta go to it. Um Originally born and raised. Where are you born and raised at? I'm born in Hartford, Connecticut. Connecticut. Connecticut, yeah. Got it, got it, got it. How long, you? that's where you was born and raised until? Born and raised. I left at 18. Uh, my mother's from Brooklyn, New York. God rest her soul. And then my father's from uh, Santiago de Cuba. He was a Marielito. He came on the boat. So if you've seen uh, Scarface, that, en that, that intro scene, that's yeah. a real footage. That's him in there. Mm. So, you know, that's, so. that's a whole different story. But uh, we'll get to that. But that's where he come from. Yeah. All right. And now... You out in? I'm out in uh, Temecula, California. California. Got it, got it, got it. I don't know why I thought you was from out in that area. Mm -hmm. um, but not nah, dope. So we get into it, man. Like, you know, one of the things I always talk about is on on the journey of building wealth. Like, mm -hmm. you got you got your military hat. Like, you rep that proud. Yeah. But it's a certain level of discipline that it takes in life that I always look to. And that's mm -hmm. why I respect people in the military, in the mm -hmm. armed forces, because of that level of what gets instilled, the yeah. type of training that gets put into you, the type of discipline, the type of mindset that you got to sure. have. And a lot of times, some of these, those same core principles is needed mm -hmm. in business. For sure. And, but it's things that on the, on the same side, a lot of people are afraid of the military because they think like, oh man, you're going to have these things I got to overcome and I got to heal from. Mm -hmm. So you talk about like healing hurdles and traumas and things like that. You're like, yo, you're going to have PTSD. It's like, yo, you get PTSD in, from the hood too. Yeah. People think like, yo, man, I just like, nah, like it's things that we come from in the environments that we grew up that we still got to overcome. Exactly. But with you going into the military, coming in, going into the military, like what made you decide to go into the military? <sighs> Be honest with you. Like, I was 18, right? I was getting into like, you know, selling stuff on the streets, right? Mm -hmm. I was either going to be dead or in jail. Mm -hmm. So when I went to the military, I was like, you know what? I got to, if I stay in Connecticut, I'm not going to do nothing with my life. All right. And when I went to the military, I was like, this could be a way out or something different. I want to make a difference, you know, not necessarily to change the country. I ain't going to lie. When I saw those dress blues and went into the office, I was like, you know, there was a, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, um, <clears throat> I wanted to be something elite. I wanted to do something that not a lot of people could say they did. Okay. So, um, and I wanted to go to the tip of the spear, right? Mm -hmm. No disrespect to the other branches like that, but we we the top for a reason, you know? When you say we the top, what you referring to who? To the Army, the Air Force, the, the <laughs> you know, all the other branches. You went to what branch? 
Say again. What branch you into? Marine Corps. Marine Corps. Boom. Marine Corps. Okay, yeah, we gotta say it. You we into I'm a Corps. Marine all day. Yeah, you know the, the with the president's own. When when shit happens, we're the first ones in. You know. Okay. Uh, they call us the bullet sponges, but we we run towards the fire. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, we have you have to be some type of crazy. You know what I'm saying? You have to be your mindset. Um, got to be some type of crazy to go. I joined when you know in '08. Um, they already came back from Fallujah. I went to Iraq, Afghanistan. I was over there when Osama bin Laden just got killed. Mm. Uh, so tons of stories on that. So I've seen a lot of things. What was that like? Like over there? When he got killed. Oh, man. So when he got killed, um, you know, you guys are seeing it on the media, but you guys don't see it behind the scenes. I'm going to be honest. With you. If, if I tell graphic, I'll get canceled. It's a cancel coach, right? But Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but. You know, we were like, okay, can we go home now? But I was like, why can't we go home? What are we really here for? And that's a deeper conversation. So it was like, you know, I've seen, you know, fields of Afghan Kush that we had to blow down, black tar hair, like motors. I got rockets shot at me. You know, people get gunshots, you know, shot at them, but I've got rockets shot at me. You know, yeah. I've seen people uh, blown up. Not going into the the graphic <laughs> detours, yeah. what I what I mean is like, okay, yeah. what was it like? Like, what was the temperament like? Like, once he got killed, did the, did the wars in the in the, in the, did it intensify? Like the attacks on you guys, and that you guys start seeing coming back to you, start intensifying. Like they were being more, they started playing offense, or was it like more defense? Once it was more defense. Once he passed once away, he passed away. It was like okay, they killed our leader, right? But mm -hmm. um. You know, at first, a lot of, you know, they're called uh, improvised explosive devices. A lot of IEDs will go off, bombs and stuff like that. But it's not like you see on the TV. It's it's, it's a very unfair fight. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's yeah. not like you see on the TV kicking the door. Da, da, da. No, this is overkill. You know what I mean? There's yeah. no chance. That's why we have the strongest military fighting force in America. Like, yeah. you know, so Got it started it. to die down. So it started to die down after yeah. that. Yeah, because that's, that's what I would think. Like, you know, like, do they start to, like, attack you guys trying to get get back or what that would be like? But, see, like you said, like, I know it's a lot of gory details that yeah. go into that. And I know it's like, yo, after experiencing that, to still come home and then you, you, you've you been able to build a family, mm -hmm. be able to come home, build your business, be able mm -hmm. to build your brand and do so much. It's like, okay, coming back home from that, what, how how did that how do that help you in business? Like being in the military, like what's some of the things that you see it contribute to, like your work ethic, your grind, or your yeah. you know? So at first, I'm gonna be honest, it wasn't it wasn't easy transitioning that we call it civilian life. Okay, right. So we call it, it wasn't it was an easy transition to civilian life. So I had to uh, read a lot of books like The Secret, mm. you know, and and grow my mindset. But what the military installed in me is, you know, I was in communications. All right. So mm. communication is key, not only with your spouse, your kids, but business relationships, yeah. uh, your clients, you know, for what I do, the, the credit, the credit bureau, everything, like, everything has to be in communication. Okay. So communication is still operations and systems. SOPs is, is that if I put it like this, if you don't do this, you die. That's how I think. Because that's I know how the SOPs extreme, was, yeah. the, the things on, on, on the operating procedures over there. It's like, yo, one misstep and, and you you ruin, you kill, you lose your life or somebody else. Yeah. And then now you got to uh, bring a flag to the family. Nobody want to do that. So it's like, mm -hmm. you know, it, it taught me communication and SOPs for sure. So, but you, you did hit on something because I think that it's people out there that's either thinking about going to the military mm -hmm. or people out there coming back from the military. And it's like, okay. When you said that transition part, I think people who've been in the military and the armed force, everybody does not come back and just go into becoming successful, like you said, the training. So go into that, like you said, reading a secret. What's that? Like, what's those hurdles? Like, what did you do or what could other people do coming out of the military? Like, what's some of the things that they need to be prepared for and some of the things people could do? Well, the thing is, is that I would recommend if they're in the military right now, like, get your schooling on point and your entrepreneurship on point. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, when I got out of the military, I was just going to school. Now they granted, I get the GI bill, right? I get paid to go to school. So I went to business school, and, but there was a teacher business. How are you going to learn from somebody that never made a million yet? Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, but the transition is crazy. So it's like, you have to instill, you have to change that mindset because remember they're called drill instructors for a reason. They drill mm -hmm. stuff into you that you'll, you'll never forget. So, mm -hmm. You know, it, 
what it takes like 67 days to, to title over said to build a habit right yeah yeah so it's like you have to really read you know the right mind the right books you have to be around the right people because i'm gonna be honest with you some people that i've i've served with and are higher they're down in luck some of them are homeless most of them are they do suicide we have a thing called in the military all across the military it's not just marine corps but the 22 a day we do 22 push-ups a day uh because uh the veteran suicide there's a lot of suicide and i believe i truly believe and i might get a lot of hit for this but i truly believe if you know veterans were to do entrepreneurship or feel significant that that rate will go down because you know when you're around these marine corps ball like or you're around these uh marine, um military reunions mm -hmm. everything is good but you know you feel i think they feel insignificant because once they get out of the military they feel like oh i gotta go back to walmart or i gotta go a job that i don't like when they could just you know learn entrepreneurship real estate credit e-commerce whatever you got to do whatever you're good at uh do that to serve the people you were serving the people in the military you served the country right continue to serve but i think they lose that you know losing that feeling of being significant mm -hmm. and, and and how important you were how, how dominant it is being in the military and then coming back and and being stripped away where it's like yo yeah you you got to go back to society and these people got higher rank than you exactly. and you're like nah like y'all the civilians yeah exactly let me tell you about something around rank too guys you know yeah. You know, we got, I got stacks for days. I mean, I lean, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Talk I got, heavy. I got, I got, you know, when, when you, when you see me walk around those blue, they say clink, 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 you know, yeah. but, um, we call that a stack, but I'm going to tell you something that shit don't mean nothing in the outside world. They can give a fuck about that. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. So that, um, uh, that's, that's just real talk. But I like what you said though, is because like that suicide rate, because finding ways to help people, mm -hmm and and still maintaining significance and being so such big contributors mm -hmm. to our society is one of the things is like in all respect to everybody who's ever served like i respect the contribution that you guys have made to help protect us and to mm -hmm. keep our you know our country the strongest in the, in the strongest sure. country out there right For real um, but it is things that we do look at when it comes to financial literacy, because like you said, it's a drill instructor, mm -hmm. but drill inst instructors are, they're drilling for certain reasons. They're not Absolutely. drilling for this type of excellence yeah. for business excellence, entrepreneur, self-sufficiency. You know, it's like, no, I need you to be a certain person when you come mm -hmm. and fight this battle, because you, when you go into the military, when you go into the Marines, mm -hmm. you don't make it mm -hmm. into the fight unless you're a certain type of person. You have, you, you, you have to be. First class, PFT, like you have to be fit. You have to, you can't pass if you're not an expert at the rifle range. Mm. Like I could see, uh, I don't want to go into detail, but yeah. you know, I could target someone 500 yards away in the head, pick them off. Like you get them, yeah. we're you gotta, trained to kill. Yeah. We're trained to kill. And that's what's in our mind. And, and, and you got to be the best at it. You got to be the you, best. And, and you, but that's what I'm saying is that you get, you go through these trainings and you become somebody else. They make mm -hmm. you, they they train you into becoming somebody else. Yeah. And I think that's the same thing, but what happens is, is that it's not as extensive when it comes to entrepreneurship and training. No. You went to business school and, and learn from people who didn't do business. Go yeah. into the Marines and get trained by somebody who's not a Marine. That, this, you can't, <laughs> like, you know what I'm you, saying? Like, you can't go to Marines, there's nobody's done, you know, you don't, you've experienced it, I'm not gonna give you merit, I'm not gonna listen to you. So that's the same thing with business. How am I going to listen to you if you haven't made a millionaire, right? Or even mentors, right? Yep. Mentors. How are you going to be a mentor when you just learned the craft and then you're selling? You know what I'm saying? That, but, like, but that's the reality. So when you yeah. look at it as when you look at the the Marines of what they built and who they how 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 it works is that they they transition people into somebody else. You have yeah. to become a different person. Yeah. And a lot of times we we miss that in entrepreneurship is that in business on this journey, you have to become a different person. Gotcha. You cannot maintain the same person you were. Oh yeah, I wanna love my family. I wanna be here for them. I still wanna go do this with them, but I wanna be great in business. Oh, I wanna go and be an entrepreneur. I wanna be mm -hmm. focused on business. I wanna be respected in business, but I wanna go do the rest with my friends. Yeah. They cannot mix, it's oil and water. And when when people realize that, it's like, I look at the Marine and that's why I look at their training. Mm -hmm. It's not, oh, oh yeah, I'm I'm going to be a Marine. I'm going to come sometime. I'm going to have a 50% hit yeah. rate. Oh, I don't need to be an expert shooter. I just need to be know somewhat. 
Mm-hmm. I don't need to, to to understand all the laws and I don't need to be all the way fit. Yeah. I don't need to run that much. I don't yeah. got to be able to do this <laughs> many miles. I just, I'm just going to do some. Yeah. What I realize in that is that that's the issue with business. Yeah. When it comes to entrepreneurship in our community is that it's not that we don't have the tools and resources. It's we don't have that drill sergeant training that that type of dedication, this or die type of mentality. Yeah. And it's hard to instill that because so many people fucking weak. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like, yo, it's like, yo, why Especially aren't you? Age. Why aren't you able to get it? It's like, yo, oh, yeah, I wanted to just go in. You know, man, I had went and did this. And it's like every reason to make an excuse or do something mm-hmm. that contradicts or conflicts what you say you want. Exactly. And people we don't realize and judge is like, yo, that's that weak shit. Yeah. And that's why you're in the position you're in is because you're allowed, you allow yourself to do weak shit. Exactly. So that's like when and, you say And then having the people check you too, like, hey, you being a little bitch right now. <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's how we talking to them. Hey, you being a little bitch right now. You know, you're right. You're right. I'll take that. You can pop shit with me. I ain't. I'm, I'm a filter. You can cuss. I don't give a okay, damn. Cook, yeah, cook, I'm not that. You seem like you like, yeah, let me watch my words yeah, a little bit. Like, nah, like, yo, you a bitch. Like, <laughs> yeah, nah, like if but when people say it like, yo, in 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 civilian, right now I'm talking to your terms. Like in the yeah. civilian world, it's like, yo, you they it's more cradle, you can't talk to me like that, yeah. or it's how it is. But over here, it's like, yo, this is what we it's live or die, motherfucker. Yeah. Like, I don't yeah. got a time for your feelings, your emotional in, intelligence. I'm not I don't care. We got a job to do, we got exactly. things to accomplish, and this is how the fuck we gotta execute. Exactly. I think some I, to be honest with you, you know, when I was in Korea too, they, it's mandatory for them to go to the military before they go down to the mm. to, to like so what I'm saying is, should Americans join the Marine? I don't know. That's but you know what? You want discipline, you want structure in life, you want to freaking make a difference, try to try the Marine Corps for four years and see what happens. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I mean, we're not at the time of war now, it was a different time, but you never know what's going on. But still the about. training. The training still, though. Going to the war, going to the war is like, it's different. But yeah. still going through that training to become that. Yeah. To make, to take yourself and in, in transition to a whole nother person. Yeah. You literally, it will literally transition you into a whole nother person. I'm one of the ones that's like, yo, I've seen like, yo, you you know, they do the, the bullets where you got to crawl under. Did all that. I can't do it. Did. <laughs> Did See, that's that. the thing. It's like, yo, I mean. Could do it, but it's like the mental where you got to get conditioned yeah. for. You yeah. got to get trained in this. You got to be prepared to know, okay, go. Yeah. And it seems easy. Yeah. Like, what is that like? Like, so I, I never did it, but phases, you did it. Right? Okay. When you get, to, when I first got there, I ain't gonna lie, I was, I was scared of shit, right? Yeah. You hear banging, you hear screaming. Like, this is a new environment, right? Mm-hmm. It was, uh, I went to Paris Island over there, Savannah, Georgia. I drove right there, flew into Savannah, Georgia, and went to Buford, Paris Island yeah. in uh, South Carolina. But what I'm saying is this. Um, there's three phases. They break you down. Whatever you learn, you know, with your parents, this is not your parents no more. Mm. You're not with your parents no more. You're not getting fed. You're not, no. You hear 18 years old, sometimes even 17, you here to become a man. All right. So they break you down. That's phase one. Phase two mm. is they build you up. And phase three, they polish you off. Mm. And, and I think that's everything. With, you know, false. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they polish you off. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. <coughs> you become a ring. You earn that Eagle Global Anchor, that title, right? So you have to earn what it. What title? Too. The Eagle Global and Anchor. They give you so when you Eagle graduate, Globe and Anchor. Eagle. Uh-huh. You have the Eagle. Like it's a our emblem. Yeah. Is the Eagle Globe and Anchor. So we represent, you know, the Navy, the Army, and uh, you know, Air Force all in one. Okay. So we master air, land, and sea. Like we're all in one with the president's own. So you have to earn that title. That's why we have the longest boot camp. We have the most strenuous workouts. We're the first in and we're the craziest where we get it in. Like we're yeah. not, it's not like you see on the TVs is all, you know, that's the name. No, we, mm. we, we want to be known. We came to fuck shit up. You know, we here. you know, we here. It's not the time to, to play when you got us there. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's overkill, but you have to train for that. That's three months. And obviously, like I said, 90 days, you already build the habit. So you became a, a different person. I'm talking about you have to eat like this and no, it kind of it's similar to prison. You know, prison is a whole different ballgame. But when to wake up four in the morning, uh, when but to shit, shower, shave, you know, you, you went to think of like yeah, how you eat. Yeah. Like even how you eat. What, what's the importance of that? <sighs> Listen, how you eat your body, your nutrition, too. But mm. it's all about the discipline. 
it got to be some kind of significance because you sat up and did it. You saw you, that, You right? sat up and you did it right. And it's like, yo, yo, you had a certain elbow movement. Like, yeah, like, uh, like you have to sit up. To, um, so when you get into the chow hall, you know, you have to, your tray, boom, right? Your tray, yeah. line. This, everything is precise. Yeah. I'm talking about how you crease your pants, how you crease your trousers. Your, 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 your uh, cover has to be two inches, you know, below your eye. Everything has to be precise. If they see a little splinter of hair, uh, like fabric coming off, you're getting fucked up. Mm. You're getting fucked up. Like everything. And, and what I mean by fucked up, sometimes they throat check you, you know, with their hats. Boom. And they don't do that no more. It's soft now. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, um, you know, everything is precise. So the nutrition, you have to, your chest has to be at the table. You have to look straight ahead and you have to bring your fork to your mouth. And mm. and when you're done, you have to have, you know, covered in a line like this. You know, mm. it's, it's everything is disciplined like that. But it has to be a reason, right? The way that you guys eat, the way that you, where you focus at, where you look, and the way that you sit, is there a reason? Like, what's the significance? Is it when you're at war? Is it things that, like... Yeah, it's just, to, it, it, when it comes down to it, is to learn how to obey orders. Mm. Which, if you got a problem with authority, which I had, mm. you ain't going to make it, even in life, too. Like, if you have a problem with authority. So, um, it's really the discipline aspect and how you know how you move your 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 whole body too. Like that's that's really what it is. Just the discipline and how to obey orders. And if you can't obey orders, you're gonna fail or you're gonna get fucked with the whole time. You're gonna have the worst time in there. Or and you're gonna they, get and out. They target you. Or you're gonna get out. Yeah. Or, or you, you don't make it. That's why it's called the few, the proud, the Marines. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. You know, bro. How old are you? I'm 34. 34. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. That's crazy. I'm yeah. 35. Yeah. Because I'm looking and I'm just thinking about the war in Afghan where I was in Iraq, where I was at. And it's like, yo, we was like the same age. Yeah. But what I was going through was, was, wasn't was anything in comparison to what you was going through. So 2008, you remember the crash happened? That's the, yeah, that's, listen, that's my, 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 my <laughs> trying times where I was built. That's where I was yeah. born at. That's where I was built at. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and then we're going to talk about how we met too, but like, but in two, I was graduated 07 high school. Right. And then in 2008, I graduated 06, 06. Right. So after in 2008, I was like, I, my parents lost the house. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, it's Fargo. <laughs> right. Crazy, crazy. We're going to get you back now. We're getting that bag <laughs> funded now. But anyways, yeah. um, they lost the house. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I didn't know what to do. I, I didn't understand that yet. I didn't understand how mortgages work and how they got the house, et cetera. I didn't even know what was going on. All I know was that the economy was not doing too bad. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to work. Me, I was like either I become rich or famous or get money, a millionaire or whatever, or I'm going to go to the Marine Corps or do something significant with my life, right? Mm -hmm. So I went in 08 and then boom. And that was the rest was history. Dope, dope. So now, coming back, four kids. I got, I got three. three kids. Three yeah. kids. Don't put that on me. We ain't trying to have no more. I ain't oh, y'all down? <laughs> okay, I got another. One. I got another. I got to yeah. get another one. There. I'm only at two. You only at two? Yeah. yeah. I only got the girls. I only you got, got two girls. girls. Yeah. What you got? I got a 13 uh, year old girl, mm-hmm. Esperanza, Joshua Jr. Right, uh, he's nine, and then Anae. She's uh, my new two year old. See, you got a boy. I don't got a boy. I only yeah. got two girls. So yeah. I got to get a boy. But um, that's another thing. Like, how does that, that experience is those things when it comes to your family discipline and like raising your mm. family and like bringing that guidance and being that leader now? Do you feel like that's a, a contributing, a, a strong contributing factor? Oh, for sure. I'm a little hard sometimes. I'm not going to lie because yeah. the military comes out. But then I have to step back and say, you know what? Uh, they're just kids too but also they're gonna learn not to be freaking bitches either <laughs> you know what i mean like yeah, i'm yeah. gonna keep I, i'm raising a son i'm not you know yeah. you get what i'm saying so i'm trying to prepare them for the, you're a father you want to yeah. you want to give your kids the world right and mm-hmm. you want to prepare them for life because i'm not gonna be here one day yeah so uh it's like i i just think like that so it definitely helped me out but i didn't have kids when i was in the military i got it when i was when so you I, I think i thought different i was a single man in the military so it was you know, but when I got out, I was like, "You said I was a single man in the military, like you was having fun in Iraq." 
No, not in Iraq. Shit. <laughs> 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 I say, yo, you a different kind of animal, you know, brother. The only fun we had in Iraq, <laughs> man, you already know. We had to go to that little owl house. It was sweating like a motherfucker. <laughs> no. You know? I never but, been. <laughs> but I uh, know, right? <laughs> but uh, but no, Japan was fun. Um, mm-hmm. I went to Okinawa, Japan. I, I lived in Okinawa, Japan. It was fun, but nothing compares to having your like your, your wife and kids to establish, you know, yeah. the legacy too. And 100%. shoot, my wife taught me a lot too. I, 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 I cause she had to deal with that. Oh my god, yeah, she had to deal with the aftermath. She had to deal mm-hmm. with the PTSD. To this day, I check the window. You know, what I'm, saying? Yeah. I'm for real. Yeah, my back always got to be against the wall. Like I'm glad I'm sitting right here. I got the yeah. corner. I always scope the. I scoped the whole place. <laughs> That's how I am, you yeah, know? Yeah. But, you know. When you say that, like, PTSD, like, it's hurt. So it's things that you got to live with. For me, myself, like, when I, I, I always tell a story is that when my grandmother died, mm-hmm. I had one sock on. You remember this story. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, like, and there was another family member that got shot and got killed and went to the hospital, one sock on. Mm-hmm. And it, it's like, first he had one sock on. I think he died before my uh, grandmother. And then when my grandmother died, it set in. Mm-hmm. Like if I wear one sock, I'm, it's bad luck, and I feel like I was bad luck. Like I was the reason she died. I didn't put yeah. two socks on. Those are things that, like, till this day, yeah. I don't move with one sock on. If I take a sock off, this other one coming off immediately. If one yeah. come off, it's like I can be sleep and one sock come off my sleep. I'm taking yeah. boop, and it's like, yo, it's things that I've noticed when it comes to things from experiences. Experience. So when you think about yours, when you say like, yo, PTSD, like what's the things you noticed that you didn't that transition yeah. with you that you still got to deal with? I mean, and I don't even like to uh, label ourselves as PTSD because I, I feel like in the Marine Corps, we call it, stop being a little bitch, right? Yeah. But um, unfortunately it happened. So um, I had to transition in how I talk to my kids. Sometimes they're not, they're not Marines, right? Yeah. You know, I would be strict on them. You know, I would, you know, we call this the knife hand. Yeah. I would be strict on them. And, um, you know, just I try to instill like marine values in them. But it, you got to remember they're only kids. So what was the question again? <laughs> like, How do it? How what's the things that you notice now with you? Just like with yourself, like after being in the Marines, what's the things that you notice that you came home with and be like, yo, this is what this did to me? Uh, I, I don't like July 4th. Right, mm-hmm. I don't like the snap crackle because look, I've seen bombs. I've got. I, I heard the crack from 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 rifles, you mm-hmm. know, near me, like zip, and and you know, I've heard bombs going in. I all you hear is, right? I've yeah. like so. I'm I to this day. I've always um checked my perimeter house, checked the seat camera, everything like that. Mm-hmm. Set up booby trapped and everything. Like that. It's it sucks, but like. Even in the hotel, when I'm staying in the hotel, I'll put that door right there. <laughs> like I don't, I don't, I don't like sleeping alone. If I, yep. you know, you know, we don't sleep alone. But <laughs> yeah, you get yep. what I'm saying. So, um, stuff like that. I remember one time in, in Afghanistan. I haven't, I didn't take a shower for 45 days, and when I got out, I would take baby wipe showers. I'm talking about not showers, like you know, yeah. showers with expired water on your head, right? And then mm. just baby wipes, boom, boom, you're good. Baby powder, and you keep it moving. So that was after you got out. After I was still, I was still in that. Oh, you said, yo, once you got out, you didn't take a shower forty five days. No, no, no. I took a shower forty five days, but sometimes when I was like, yeah, I'm feeling a little. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I won't take a shower. Boom. <laughs> but it was just things that started getting instilled, and you like, oh, I, yeah. I can live and exist like this. You start putting yeah. certain traits and characteristics of how you can exist. Like, yo, I can operate like this. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. People, I've slept in dirt. You know, yeah. and I, actually, one of the best sleeps I ever had was under the stars. You know. Yep. In, in Afghanistan, you know, but I've slept in dirt. Now nah, we got to double back on that. One of the best sleeps you ever had, like, uh, oh, yeah, no way. You can't tell uh, me you the <laughs> best sleep. One of the best sleeps you ever had. One of the best sleeps I ever had was is, was in Afghanistan because the sky, you just see the sky. You're out there mm-hmm. in the desert. Obviously, you can't show your light because if you show your light, you give away your position. Mm-hmm. And we was over there at Taliban. Like, remember, this is right. You you guys can Google, I mean, uh, uh, YouTube, mm-hmm. Operation Rawhide 2. That's my company in there. You'll see it. It'll pop up. Yeah. Baram Cha, right there near the Pakistan border. That's where we were. So at night, you know, it was beautiful because all you see is the stars. And every time I would look at night, I was like, man, I can't wait to go home. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, 66 and Surge will come across the border and we have to dip, deal with them. So, but it was, it was... It's kind of crazy. Like I said, Maurice is crazy. I'm just saying, thinking, trying to get some sleep under those circumstances. Like me as a civilian, it's just like, yo, I would just be sitting there being like, 
Wow. Yeah. You adapt. Yeah. And we have a thing called in the Marine Corps, adapt and overcome. Mm. We, we, you got to adapt to any situation. Good, bad, ugly, beautiful. You have to adapt. We're trained to adapt. Hey, if this happens, pivot. What you going to do is stand there and cry like a little bitch? No. Yeah. You have to. You know, sometimes I, I, I remind myself like, fuck is you doing you a fucking marine you know i so i just I, I gained all this weight back right i was i was i was looking like the rock you know what i'm saying yeah. <laughs> v cut and everything i gained i'm out at 330 now i'm starting to lose weight i'm trying to be on your tip you know what i'm saying yeah 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 but you like um, you lose yourself sometimes you you know you get comfortable you get complacent and in the marine corps it says complacency kills mm. complacency kills like literally it'll kill you complacency will kill you so if you apply that to business practices you know, you, you, you won't get killed in business, you know? And so now you came home, you served the country, mm -hmm. you've, you've managed on how, you've learned how to deal with the pros of being in the military, all the mm -hmm. discipline and, and, and understanding that level of like discipline, yeah, right? And, sure. and being that, that key in to come home, build a family. Mm-hmm. So like I look at that and then one thing I respect is like the morals, values, and the ethics is there. Mm -hmm. Because to stand in and raise a family, mm -hmm. show, that shows the same level of discipline still came in. But now you're going to a point where it's like, yo, okay, now I'm in entrepreneurship. Yes. Now, when you're coming out of the military in that transition, how, cause you're in the credit space and in the credit industry, how did credit play a part? And like, what was, what made you yeah. get into credit coming out of the military? Okay, you're going to be like- a, this is a Back in 2009, I mean, yeah, back in 2009, I was in Iraq, serving in Iraq. One of my own blood family members mm -hmm. took 6 k out of my bank account, plummeting my score to the 500s. Mm. So while I was getting shy, I had everything like that, I felt like I was a victim of identity theft from my own family, blood family. Mm. You know, and I don't hold it to them, but like they didn't know nothing about credit back then. So they were like, oh, he making money, which we don't make shit in the Marine Corps. Trust me, yeah. 1800 a month, any shit. Mm -hmm. Right. But what I'm saying is this, it plummeted my score to the 500s. I didn't know what to do. So obviously when I got back from my pump, we call it pump deployment. Mm -hmm. uh, I tried to apply for cars and apartments. I got denied for apartment car i had a mustang i thought i was a shit 19 percent apr right and if you got a night no i'm saying but like yeah. I, I i thought i was i was a shit but really i didn't understand right so you know i started to you know over the course of 10 years i started to invest into mentorships over 50k in mentorships you know yeah. um and i invested to a course with ty lopez and steven Lau back in 2015 2016 mm -hmm. And that's why I saw you. <laughs> yeah. yep. I saw we that we met. I didn't even know we didn't know each other like that. I knew you was moving and shaking. And then I started seeing YouTube ads with you and the family and the Louis. I was like, dog, I know this dude. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Mm -hmm. And I just studied it. I studied. But, but here's the thing though. I didn't choose credit. I, I think it chose me. So after I got out, you know, I tried entrepreneurship, right? I did three MLMs. Three. What three you did? I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you because so, you know some of these people, that, right? Yeah. I did Organo Gold. Mm. I think David Emanet is there, right? Um, I did uh, Wake Up Now and Advocare. But yeah. well, that Wake Up Now, she was irritated. Them, yo, oh, y'all came out of nowhere. God. It was so strong. It was like oh, Wake Up. Man. It was like yo, it came out of nowhere and was so strong. Yeah. Organo Gold. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you know what? I do recommend. It's like I I hate MLM, but then again, I love it. I think it builds it builds so much characteristic when it comes to sales. Yes, it's a different it builds a different animal to understand yeah. that 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 operation and being that environment. Mm -hmm. And it's so it's 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 one of the most positive environments you could realistically exactly. be in. No, the culture true. of MLM is different. And I and I think a lot of people they we've painted a stereotype of like true. oh pyramid scheme. Yeah. But it's just the real reality is that if you exist in it, what happens is, is that it's different ways on how you gain success exactly in it. And you have to understand the psychology of the business. You have to understand the growth of the structure when you get in. The, the timing is everything exactly. and that it is it's, it's money and opportunities and starting up. It doesn't cost you much. Exactly. But, you know, it, it you do have to be in it. You do have to build your brand in that like any other business. Exactly. And it, that's the hard part where people think like I'm going to come in. It's going to be easy. But you know what it taught me to? Not only that, that's the first time I learned about the secret. I ain't gonna lie, I cried. 
<laughs> when I was ready to learn the secrets, yeah. I was like, should I be doing this my whole fucking life? Mm-hmm. But now that I'm conscious of it, now I, I, I have understanding on how to take control of my brand because what you think, you become, right? Mm-hmm. So I started reading more personal development. Jim Rohn, Tony Robbins, John Maxwell, like all of those those good people, audio books and, and reading. So I was like, hmm, I'm changing my mind, so I'm coming different. But what it taught me the most, which I'm in love with, is recurring and mm. compound interest. Mm. Yeah. Downline. Like, like yeah. I started getting into to, to stocks and bonds and investing, you know, compound interest and and learning about recurring and building a team and structure, leading a team. I yeah. Like, oh shit. I, I know how to lead. Oh, this would be perfect. Started losing friends, you know. I thought I was dressing up. Yep. No money. <laughs> <laughs> I was making no money, right? Yo, listen, I got the suit pictures and everything. <laughs> Yo. You name it. Uh, you know, so after that, you know, and during that time too, I just transitioned from music. No, don't get me wrong, I got bars. I told you, you got I, bars. Look, yeah. bars. I did reggaeton too. I'm a Latino, you know. So <laughs> I was on, I was on the radio station. Look it yeah. up too. Yeah. In the Bay, mm-hmm. I was on in, in San Francisco, Las Vegas, and Palm Springs. I would do tours. Like I would really uh, rock stages in Zelda's Palm Springs. If you know about it, you know. But mm-hmm. you know, but I didn't like that life because I wasn't getting no money either, and it was. You know, I was just me and my girl. I was getting with, you know what I'm saying? It mm-hmm. wasn't the right John, right? So after the music, I did the MLM. You said M- it wasn't the right John. My man being around, you been around Herm too much. I know, right? You got, <laughs> yeah, you been around Herm Shout too much. Shout out to Herm, man, yo. But um, <clears throat> what I'm saying is after, after the music and after the MLM, I was like, this is not working, right? Mm-hmm. I had a bunch of, I think. I'm a Gemini. You a Gemini. I think everything we touch, we adapt to. Yep. You know what I'm saying? It's like, we just make it the best. We got to be the best. 100%. When we walk in the room, no, we the one. You got to feel That's it. At all times. At all times. So, and I have this level of confidence no matter where I'm at. I, I walk everywhere comfortably. So, you know, I did the music. I did the MLM. And then after that, you know, I did uh, phone flipping on eBay overseas. All right. Yeah. That's my first real online like entrepreneurships were like Shishin! when i heard that ebay go through and i was with iphones and i didn't even have an iphone i just got an iphone because of yeah. this dude right here you know yeah. what I'm my man texting in the bubble green is like yo it's childish bro you know but <laughs> i would flip all the new you know the new iphones the new gadgets the new electronics but sometimes you get a little shady in that business you know what i'm talking about i almost got robbed and, and stuck up so I was like, and you got to go to cash. I got to go, uh, you know, we buy iPhones on Craigslist, all that shit, right? Yep. So that, was, that wasn't that was good. So I was like, shoot, what am I going to do? I still got a little bit of GI uh, bill left money over, mm. right? So I went to Paul Mitchell, the school. Okay. For those of you listening, I am the nicest barber there is. Put your barber against me and I'm I'm put a rack up. Yo, listen, my man said, I can shoot you from 500 miles away. Exactly. I can give you a 16-bar freestyle. You know? I can give you a haircut, and I can fix your listen. credit. Yo, my man is multi... <laughs> oh, wait. And I can build a team in MLM. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yo, listen. Like, we yo, haven't th- even got the credit yet. That's, you know? the, that's the... Bro, this is... You. <laughs> yo, bro, listen. Let me explain something. I don't think... Because uh, what I'm taking, right, is that I look at what you've been able to build and what you do now. Mm-hmm. But I, what, the common denominator is mm-hmm. that... Not quitting, and and quit. all of them from cutting hair from it's things that you've taken away, and I guarantee, give me one one thing you've taken, one strong thing that instilled that you still use from the military today. Give me one. Don't give up or die. Like like mindset. The mindset is that yeah. is determined to die. Give me one thing that you take away from being an MLM and the MLM companies. It would be mindset and how to build a team. It's it's like a lot of things, but. Mindset for sure, and how to build a team, yeah. like the the organization, seeing mm-hmm. the organization, organize music, music. What's that? What's something that you took away that that impacted stage you? presence? Uh, being uh, marketing. I used to hand out mixtapes for free out of the trunk of my car. Mark, mar- well, you just said it, marketing. Yeah. So okay, so you got determination. We got we got determination in in, in the resiliency from mm-hmm. the military. We got when it came to uh, MLM, how to build a team and leadership. Then when it came into music, it taught you about marketing. When it come to being a barber, what was something that you learned that you Attention took away? Attention to detail. 
attention to detail, right? I'm gonna tell y'all something is that one thing about life is experiences is your biggest is your biggest lesson. Mm -hmm. the, the number one lesson and the biggest thing that can ever be your teacher in life is experiences. When you experience different things, a lot of times people be scared to experience things They're like, oh, I don't know if it's gonna work. When you go all in, because I don't think you went halfway, you didn't go halfway in the military, you wouldn't be sitting here. Mm -hmm. You didn't go halfway in with, 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 uh, MLM because you said I started losing friends because I believed yeah. this was the path. Exactly. You didn't go halfway in with, with, with the music because you were going on tour, going on radios, yeah. going rocking stages. Yeah. You were all in. Yeah. I don't think you started, you just put your lot, you just put anybody up that you can cut hair better than them. Exactly. So the confidence is there. You was uh, all yeah. in and you you had a plan on a way that you were going to become successful in being but a I barber. But I back it up though. I got the trope like nationwide, you have to, mm -hmm. you have to go to something called Caper. Those who in Paul Mitchell mm -hmm. No. You have to sell bags to even attend. I was the number one in the nation across all Paul Mitchell schools. Mm. And I won for best fade lineup and everything. Right. Okay. And then I went in Long Beach. You know the Queen Mary over there? I think it's in, uh, it's in Long Beach. For those of you in Long Beach know the Queen Mary. But they hold the mow down competitions. I was number one. I took a thousand dollars cash prize. I got shears mm. and everything like that. So I was like, man, Barbara's going to be my thing. And then guess what happened? You know, guess what happened? I, I want. I, I skipped the, the part with Ty Lopez okay. because I'm a circle how how credit comes back. But guess what happened in 2020? The COVID, right? And they said all barbers got to go home. They can't you can't cut out the shop. I used mm. to do house. I was charging three fifty a cut. Mm. Three fifty for a haircut. I did the massage, the steam rollers, everything. Right, but yeah. I was like, I still got to clock in and be present to get cash. You know. I was like, what can I do that I know already that I've studied, you know, back in 2016 when I met you, right? We, yeah. we invested into Ty Lopez. And while I was doing mm. that MLM stuff like that, mm. I was heavy into Ty Lopez entrepreneurship. He was like the, the, the godfather of this, right? Mm -hmm. But I started connecting with people. I tried wholesaling. To, I, 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 I tried wholesaling real estate. Exactly. I tried the SMMA course for marketing. <laughs> I tried <Yep. laughs> all of that. I, I, I didn't care to, to fail. But I don't care to fail. That this what and the thing is that the 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 thing is that what people on this like when we break it down, it's like the, on those hurdles that we overcome is that determination. But you got to believe in whatever the mission is, mm -hmm. and don't be afraid to to transition to something else mm -hmm. and, and allow your vision. It may change, but you got to be all the way in. Exactly. You can't be halfway in. Like if it work, it work. It's like nah, I, I take that you was in it, but then even when it didn't work and it was time for you to transition out. You still took the good. I haven't heard you complain once throughout this whole conversation. I haven't really heard you complain and say, "Man, I wish I wouldn't have did this." There has not been any regrets that you that my you wife named. do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. My wife is like, "Stop complaining." I'm like, "Yeah, you're right." You know what I mean? But she, you know, the wives are always gonna. They're they, the ones that, and you shout out to the wives out there. You know, mm -hmm. they're the ones who put up with the most of the shit. You know, yeah, what I'm talking they got to deal with the, us the behind with this life, scene. boy, Shh, for real. So All right, so and then that so. What I'm saying is, and then after I said, you know what? Credit. Credit. Mm -hmm. I know credit. I've been doing credit back then, 2015, 2016. I learned it, but I was just doing it for myself and, and for family members. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Not not charging nothing. I just wanted, because I wanted to change my life. I wanted to be educated. I didn't like feeling dumb when I got denied and when I came out of Iraq and I had that 18% APR. So I was like, I'm going to invest over the 10 years. And I'm just knowing. And then in 2020, mm -hmm. March, I'll never forget it. I look, I was like, credit pair software. That's what I got that. The CRC, right? And I was mm -hmm. like, I look at my girl, I look at my wife. She said, I was like, babe, we're going to be rich. <laughs> I swear to God. Yeah. There's a, there, I even have, I ain't going to put it out, but I even have what <laughs> I'm in my drawers, shirt all, nothing. Not, mm -hmm. Signing people up. Like I was dedicated. I was up at three in the morning. Learning yeah. how to set up the website, Wix softwares and everything like that. Having the Wix. automation. What? what? Yo, <laughs> you know listen, what that Wix and then getting you know? on getting on CRC was like, oh man, it's up. They put everything yeah. in one place, and you sitting there trying to master it, bro. Bruh. It was it was like, yo. And then, but then now I look back and be like, yo, they had such a genius business model mm. because I did the fourteen day free trial to see how it worked and fell in love with it. And I started putting people in yeah. it, and then I realized like, yo, yeah. I can't get out. Yeah, no, nah, you can't I was get off. Addicted. Plus, I knew it. I wasn't a novice. I wasn't a beginner at the credit. See, mm -hmm. a lot of people, they're beginner at it. I've studied old school, you know, methods. John Alzheimer, you know, the, mm -hmm. you know, the, the big dudes, you know yeah. what I'm talking about? So it's like, I really learned credit. And to this day, I'm still a student. I'm yeah. still learning. I'm, I'm humble enough to learn from people like you, from people like, shout out to Bobby, everybody like that, you know? So mm -hmm. 
I'm still invested into my knowledge because I'm always a student. But I'm that guy, right? When it comes to this credit, and I, like I said, that's why I claim right now I have the most video client testimonials in the credit pair industry, and that's what I'm saying. You know, what the I'm saying? most video client testimonials. <laughs> I gotta say it. Yeah, no, but the, you know, I gotta flex my stuff. But that's that's one of the things, though, bro. Is that you got to be confident in your industry, but you got to believe in yourself, mm -hmm. and and that's the thing is that standing on it because like. You're going for the best, and it's crazy. Like you just said it, what you just said. Like, nah, I got the most video client testimonies. This, that, and the third. As an entrepreneur, as a business owner, you have to be dedicated, but you have to have confidence in yourself. Mm -hmm. You have, like, you know, we both Gemini, so y'all see a little bit yeah. of Kanye come out. You, you see, you see his Kanye <laughs> coming out. But um, you know. I, I, I like it because, bro. I can look, I'm always learning and I mm -hmm. study people mm -hmm. and I study, okay, what's the, what's the characteristic traits of like, yo, what's contributing to your success? And what I look at contributing to your success is that initially when we went to the military thing, you said, no, nah, I went to the top of the top. I went for the best. I went for the Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. I didn't go anywhere else. I went for the, the, the toughest one. I wanted to be the baddest. And so going there is like, yo, this is where I'm at. I'm going, okay, we've come into a barber. Like I'm winning the competitions. I'm going in making sure I'm winning. Like, exactly. did I get in this space? Like I want to win. Like you got to have that, that level of competition mm -hmm. and, and competitiveness. You got to have a competitive edge. It doesn't mean that, oh man, I got to tear other people down or mean like, yo, I don't want Definitely you to not. win or things like that. Like I want you to win. I want you to be as great as you can for sure. because you're going to put more pressure on me to be greater. Exactly. And I'm, cause I'm going for number one and I'm, mm -hmm. and I'm okay with that. But I need great competition too. Exactly. I need people to be great. Not, okay, I need you to be miserable and suck so I can yeah. be great. And that's one thing I respect is like, yo, as you continuously build and you uplift and you push people, it's it's not that you push people for the sake of, though I'm just trying to push you. It's like, mm -hmm. nah, this is what I believe. Mm -hmm. This is who I am. Like, this is just how I operate. Mm -hmm. And that's like, so as we sitting here talking, I'm like, yo, I'm learning. I'm like, yeah. nah, this dude is just, it's number one. I yeah. just want to be number one yeah. I, and I'm going to be the best. And no matter what the hurdles is that we go through in life, y'all, like as we build wealth and we go through this journey, like you have to be committed to yourself and to being sure. becoming better, always becoming better. And anything you get involved with, you should want to be the best in it and you be your best version of yourself. For sure. Like For sure. you ain't missed with the shirt. You got the, you always Look, got the brand shirt. You know, my on. wife calls me a cartoon character. <laughs> Cause she said I wear the same shit every day. Yeah, but I got different one. Look, I I take showers now. <laughs> I take yeah, showers now. I don't sports. do that baby white shit no more. But yeah. look, yeah. all the time marketing, marketing. I'm mm -hmm. always. Can you show them what we? Oh, I got you real quick. What my wife made for you real quick. Yep. It's a little gift. And 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 Ty Lopez told me this. Oh, mm -hmm. always when you go to your mentors or or. You want to give them a gift. You can't come empty-handed, right? Give I them appreciate a gift. It. You know, something that you're going to use. Or I know that you're a you marketer. Know. Yeah, 100%. You know? This is the thing, though, right? Um, you always you always got that brand on, right? Always. And I'm like, man, this dude must be a master at YouTube. <laughs> I'm like, yo, and my thing, I'm like, yo, this dude must be a, he must yeah. be a whiz on YouTube or something. No, like, I'm not. I just like to market myself. Like, I just started. I only have, like. 2,000 people, but those 2,000 people are organic. And what I'm saying is I'm growing every day. Like, So wait, how, but because you've been rocking them shirts, you didn't, you wasn't even pushing YouTube like that. No. You was just, that's just was something, that was just the brand I, or logo. What was like, that? Look, no, no, no disrespect for people who wear Gucci, Louis. Like I got Balenciaga. I got all that stuff on the feet and stuff like that. But why not wear your own brand? Why not wear yourself? You get what I'm saying? You, 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 you giving other brands money. Mm -hmm. Why don't you give yourself money? Why don't you give yourself the clout? You got to believe in yourself. That's the thing. The confidence. I, I've, it's the confidence. You got to believe in yourself. And I believe in myself heavy. Yeah. Heavy. I'm a contradictory to that. I wear all the bullshit. I know. I'm I know. All the designer shit. I'm going to get fly. I, I rep my brand. I rep my color. Yeah. But it is, I get but where people say. Though. Nah, even when I was established, I'm yeah. gonna shit. I always been fly. Like yeah. I got picture. I literally was looking at picture yeah. from 2006 last night. I had a fur coat on, standing by a 2006 Dodge Charger mm -hmm. with a sidekick and a fitted cap and another phone on my on onto my ear. I've always been this way. Yeah, but I get it. Like I come from that though. Like yeah. this is a part of I want to get fly. Like I always like New York. Like I love yeah. Harlem. Like they, they, just the Fabulous. way they carry it. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I always been into that and I, and I like getting dressed and people like, yo, but I've never wanted to, I, for the life of me, 
I I now get clothes custom. Like this is, you know, yeah. one of my guys' brands. This is Starstruck, but still got on Dior's. Still sure. get, but understanding custom and things like that. But it's certain looks that I always wanted to go for. Mm-hmm. And I never had the tenacity to want to go and develop my own clothing brand and go into clothes sure. where I'm selling them. But I get it when you say like, yo, I'm rocking my brand. Like for me, I'm always in blue. Um, so it's not a knock at what a disagreements of what you said. It's just two different perspectives. For sure. And a tax at it is that, okay, you know, people should always be on brand, always should be representing themselves. That's why I always, it's always going to be, it's usually blue. You know what I mean? Like my when I'm out and on stages and I'm in events, I'm always in blue. blue. That's your brand. That's my brand color. So it's still on point. But I do wear designer and things like that. Sure. And I tell nothing people, wrong with that. Yeah, I tell but people. I bet you something though. What? Try that one, one day. Look, for those of you guys who are with me, ever with me or on camera, right? When kids or people see this versus Instagram or Facebook, when they see this, they say, "Oh, that's your YouTube." That's a conversation starter. Mm-hmm. One. And then two, kids, when I pull up with my McLaren with my son to drop him to school that I have my YouTube on the logo, he's like, whoa, is your dad like rich or something? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. it boosts my son's confidence now. Yep. And then it's like, you know, oh. Your um, dad's a YouTuber. You know, he's a YouTuber. And then they go look. And then now they have a call to action, et cetera. You know what I mean? So you're giving the kids a call to action, bro. They ain't got credit, bro. What are we <laughs> doing here? The, the Yo. No, they need to grow their they need to grow their credit too when they're 18, right? <laughs> uh, I say y'all taking you know my eight year old kids to school, put the well, call to action on them elementary kids. I I I dare you to uh, to put that out in public at an event and see bro. if nobody stop you. Do you find you know? And this you started getting more organic subscribers too. Yeah. Now nah, you know the thing with me is um let me see again. For real. Yeah, the um the thing with me is Fortunately, uh, I go out, it's always like, I'll be trying to be like, they be like, yo, him 500? Nope. Yeah. Yo, I, I was like, yo, are you? Bro, since I lost weight, that's the funny thing though. They be yeah. like, yo, at one point, people wasn't catching on to the transition. Yeah. So I would be places and they wouldn't be sure. And so I would be able to move a yeah. little bit smoother. Yeah. Now they starting to catch on and it's like, nah, yo, him 500. Dude. And I'm like, damn, okay. So the weight loss didn't kick in. Cause at one yeah. point, bro, I got a good year out of this where I would go places and I would be able to go to the mall and I'd be walking through and it'd, it'd kind of be like, yeah. Like, especially when I don't got nothing on. Like if I'm, if I'm dressed down, I can only imagine. hoodie, gray sweater, I'm gray sweats, gray hoodie, pair of forces. It just yeah. dressed. And it's like, yo, I'm walking. People don't catch it. But now mm-hmm. it's starting to be like, <laughs> nope, got you. Yo, five, yeah. let me talk to you real quick. And so it, it, it's catching on. But that branding, though, you're 100% right, especially for people that's that's growing and, and coming about. Mm-hmm. I always would go out blue. I'm always got my, listen, it's always something that's going to give recession proof away. For it's sure. going to be somewhere, right? Somewhere. And so it's always on brand and being on brand point, brand awareness, because that is, you're your first stance of brand awareness and marketing. For sure. Second part is that then you go into campaigns where it's like, yo, okay, you may get familiar with this. I may see that there, but I also seen it on the McLaren. Mm-hmm. So I've seen your McLaren, mm-hmm. right? And for me, I laugh because we, we will park our cars places and just leave them there. Yeah. Just go leave the car somewhere. Just park around the place. Go yeah. park it at Lennox Mall and just leave it there. Park valet for $15, free market. Mm-hmm. Like, yo, here go a dub. Leave my car up here. And people just go follow but they start to see the brand it's like yo what is that that you do and then if you ever see that then it's a comparison if you go get a billboard in your city and you put the 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 logo with just youtube josh rico people like what is that Mm -hmm. i might get a billboard and just put hash just put the instagram logo on him 500 and see how it do i remember that remember that 2020 uh was it 2021 right las vegas yep 2022. 2022. Mm-hmm. Fire event, by the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I was looking forward to that New York one, for sure. Yeah, next one coming. That. Next one coming. I'm about to make Ooh, an announcement soon. All right, all right. Stay yeah. tuned for that. But look, uh, that one changed my life, too. I was like, I got to go hard. I said, one of these days, I'm going to be on stage or be with him 500. You watch it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, people don't know our history. Like, you, we were in the same group. And I took, I saw you took off. And I just want to say I'm proud of you, bro, for real. Nah, man, I appreciate it. I, I appreciate it. You got to give, you got to pay homage where homage is due. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Because I think a lot of people think like I got started in 2020. People nah. don't know that we've been in this credit space since 2015. This is not an overnight like, journey. 2015. <laughs> you got to think about it. It's almost 10 years in the making of yeah. in this space. Like, I literally, 2015, was it even 2015? It was like 2015, 2000, beginning of 2016. Yeah. But I was in it before I got 
to um, the Ty Lopez joint because I started figuring out, I started realizing I needed mentors. So mm -hmm. I knew what I knew. I learned credit repair when I was 18 mm -hmm. in the real estate office. I had all the documents and everything like that. So when it came time for me to start doing, I was like, y'all want to make some money. I pulled out the old documents. Yeah. It still worked. Still. And so I'm like, okay, but then I had to refresh and start learning mm -hmm. because it was like, okay, you were taught credit repair, but you were taught what to do. Yeah. So I had all the templates and all the letters that we would copy and, and make copies of and keep and different dispute tactics. So I had everything in a file cabinet. It's a crazy thing. Yeah. And when it came time to start learning, I started relearning and I started just learning other options and what else are people doing? How are people monetizing? What are people doing? And I started kind of putting it together, getting in these different groups. And I remember getting in that Ty Lopez group and it was like, okay, mm -hmm. okay, these little Asian kids over yeah. here is moving different. <laughs> and and that was that was dope. And it was like, but it wasn't my community. It wasn't our community. Like, it, it, we, we, unfortunately, guys, like I'm Latino, full Latino, Cuban, Puerto Rican, right? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But the thing is, is that the black and brown community, we were never taught about credit. Bro, if you think about the blacks that were in that community right there, mm -hmm. even black and brown, like you think about it, it was like me, you, um very few people one dude took off though it was one other dude that took off uh mac angelo you remember buddy he had yeah. took off for a second i don't know where he had yeah. now but <laughs> mac angelo had took off he yeah. had some motion um yeah it was a girl one girl they they tried to build a little they had a little motion but it, i feel like they tried to compete with me and i'm like yo yeah. i'm not out here competing with y'all no, I he took off. Yeah, I was There's on no something else. It was like, damn, this dude took off. But you went a different route, though. Yeah. Like, uh, you went your own niche. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's the thing about it in business is that you got to carve out your own niche. And and the thing is that I did something for him. I, I'm, I'm not, I didn't come in this to be like a credit guy. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm a hustler. I get money. I do business. The only reason I was messing with credit was because I kept doing these businesses and I didn't, know, I didn't have funding behind me. Mm -hmm. I don't have nobody to give me money and I never wanted an investor because I ain't asking nobody for money. Mm -hmm. I don't want to come ask you for money and then got to deal with you and, and you have say so in my business. Like I couldn't Bro. do it. So when I started learning credit and I started learning like the different rewards and things like that. And I'm like, wait, why y'all getting reward points? I didn't know. So when I first learned about like MS, I'm like, why are you getting reward points? And I'm like, oh, y'all using for benefits. And I said, mm -hmm. oh, y'all traveling and shit. I said, I don't need that. Yeah. Mm, cut this out. And this could help my community like this. For and sure. I and then it led into everything else that I knew. And it was like, yo, I don't, I don't look at it as the same lane. I'm looking at it from like a business owner, hustler perspective. I'm trying to get out the hood. You said community too. You mm -hmm. you have one of the the most impactful mm -hmm. <laughs> right? yeah. communities that they ever built. Like you I said, appreciate it. ain't nobody's built what you built. And yeah. I commend you for that. So you, people just got to mimic that and run with it. That's when, and when I started getting into funding too, because we do business credit funding too. When I got funded and I bought my first Section 8 rental house with a credit card, that's recurring revenue too. Section 8 guaranteed every month. You know yep. what I'm saying? So it's like, now I know what to do with the money to build wealth so I could pass it down to, you know, invest it to trust and everything like that. So Because people think that you just get credit, like, yo, credit is just going to change the world. It's like, nah, no, you got to know what to do, do with it. it. That And that was the key. And it's like, yo, when you start learning what to do with it and what it can do. Mm -hmm. Now, that's the that's the game changer. And when we learn that, people think like, okay, like they're looking be like, oh, yeah, Josh Rico, he does credit repair. But it's like, okay, credit repair is the first level because this is your entry way up to, to, to the next level. And exactly. there's so much more that you guys get access to. But I realize most of our people are stuck at the gate. Yes. It's you the can't, unfun part. Yeah. Credit repair is the unfun part. Unfortunately, it's necessary. You have to build it and dispute the discrepancies. But when you get that funding and when you know what to do with it to create wealth, Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's the real fun part. And then you could travel and stuff like that. And then you get to have fun. And, and mm -hmm. But that's the thing, bro. And I think in our community is that the discipline. And I know you yeah. see it in the same way because you deal with so many clients when it comes oh, to credit yeah. repair. It's like, okay, but your discipline. It's like, yo, I just fixed this. Like, yo, why did you go and apply for something? Like, you already knew you was getting denied oh, for everything. Oh, man, you don't want me to go there. And it's like, yo, the discipline that you see or you get people funding and then they be like, okay, I just need some more funding. And you're like, no, no, you don't. No. You don't need more funding. You just messed up this funding. You need better habits. I want. Oh my God! You said what I was gonna say. You want to know the how to fix credit? Mm. Pay your shit on time over the course of ten years with multiple accounts. Yeah. Set up on auto pay three to five days before the statement date. Mm -hmm. Stay at six percent utilization. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Don't apply. Yep. As, apply strategically. Yeah. Okay. And yep. then after, before you apply, no, get money in your business first. That's cash flowing, like you said. 
and then ramp it up with funding. Yep. Yep. You know? And I think that it's 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 a thing where people don't want to accept the reality of what it is and where it's at on the, on themselves. Mm -hmm. They look at what I want, not what I have to do. It's exactly. so the difference between wants and, ha and, and, and have to's. Mm -hmm. You have to become a certain person to grow. And you've, if, if nothing else learned in this episode, if I want y'all to take away, is that who this person became from an 18-year-old kid coming out of Connecticut, who he had to become and what he had to go through to become this person to, to instill the level of confidence, to instill mm -hmm. the level of vision and leadership and team building, to instill the level of dedication in the mindsets. Everything that has happened over the course of his life created who you are today. It's not that you've learned one thing in one course. It wasn't that you went and did one thing. It's not, oh, I joined Recession Proof and everything changed. No, it's not, oh, I joined uh, Ty Lopez, everything changed. It's not, oh, I went to um, barber school and everything changed. Oh, I went, I did MLM and that changed my life. Oh, I went into the military, it changed my life. Mm -hmm. It's a compounding effect of effort, dedication, and continuous work from you. And exactly. the only person that is success, uh, responsible for your success is you. And exactly. that's the thing that I salute the most. And I appreciate you taking time out and appreciate being a part it, of the family. Oh, I appreciate you. what you're doing for the community and helping so many people. Listen, y'all, it's my brother Joshua Rico. Above all, father, retired military, and now one of the, the, the leading people in the credit repair space. And helping our culture take it to the next level, y'all. Y'all tap in with my guys. Another episode of Wealth.